stopped. All of a sudden, the roof starts shaking. And people's eyebrows are raised up. What's going on here? Like, what's happening? Do you guys do anything to get to Jesus? You're devout Catholics, so the answer to that is, and what must you do to get to Jesus? You hear that? There's nothing you could have done. There's not a place you are. If a paralyzed man can get to Christ, so can you. And people like them can hear the gospel as well. And I would say to you, mate, thank you, I'll take that off you now. Um, are you a Christian? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does that look like for you? Well, what I mean that, when did you become a Christian? When did you encounter Christ? You're born into it. Recently, I've been, obviously, I've been reading, like, I was born into it, but I wasn't really looking into it. I was going mass every day, and more involved. Yeah, and, how, and how's that going for you? Because I tell you what, mate, I was born into Christianity. I, I could have told you. We started church at 10.30, by 11.30 I was hungry, and by 12.30 I wanted to go home and eat. And I could have told you everything the vicar was going to say at the time, Church of England, when they were going to say it, how they were going to say it, probably the hymns that we were going to have, but you know what happened? As soon as I was, was old enough, I got out of there as fast as possible, because it was unattractive. And what I mean unattractive was, my heart desired the things that were in the streets. My heart desired the things of the world. And the Bible tells us we're slaves to that desire. And I think we all know, if you're a Christian, especially if you're a Christian, or if you're not a Christian, you do things that you know that you shouldn't be doing. You have desires for things that you know aren't right. And sometimes we sit in churches, and we pretend that we've got a church face on, and we just go through the motions from 10.30 till 12.30, then we'll go back, next week but the reason I fell away mate is because I didn't know the head of the church I don't mean the Pope I didn't know the reason I didn't know what it was all about I thought I just went to church and I was better than the people in the street but actually that's not what Jesus says is it what does Jesus says about our heart and if you don't know it's right, I'm gonna tell you yeah Jesus says your heart and mine and all of these guys here is deceitful it's dreadfully wicked. And people don't like hearing that. But I think when we look at the world, it's more than obvious that it's deceitful and wicked. And actually, the Bible tells us that it's opposed to God. So when you're out here, right, and you, and you, and you, and you talk to people, and you say, hey, guys, you want to know Jesus? Jesus made you. Jesus died at the cross for your sins. Do you want to come know him? Nine times out of ten, they say, no, shut up, keep it to yourself. Why? Because our heart is deceitfully wicked. It doesn't want God. It wants anything but God. So, with that said, how is a man saved from that heart? Do you know? Putting your faith in Jesus. Putting your faith in Jesus. Amen. Good. You, hey, you're on the winner. And when you put your trust in Jesus, you are trusting the fact that he died at the cross. And that when he did that, that your sins were forgiven. You know that big long list of sin that we've all done? On that day you stand before God and you're going to have the righteousness, the robe of righteousness on your shoulders and God's going to say something to you which is the best thing you could ever say to anybody is that I remember your sins no more. Well done, good and faithful servant. Now, what we see here, boys, is you can either have I remember your sins no more or the fact that we think we're going to go before the Almighty and give an excuse for the things that we've done. Oh, well, I did, like, I did six good things only did four bad things surely you can overlook the bad stuff because i was good right but you know how holy god is god doesn't work like that you're bang to rights you are exposed before the lord so the only thing that we can do guys is not hold on to works based religions or good behavior we fall upon the grace of god the bible calls that being born again and that's called being filled with the spirit and when we hear filled with the Spirit, sometimes you have images of like those guys going crazy online and doing backflips. And oh, I'm not saying that. I'm not endorsing that. When I say you're filled with the Spirit, yeah, he's in me. He's in me. When I speak this, he's talking to you. And when he convicts you, he's also talking to you. God bless you, brother. 
You know when you preach this word, when you preach this gospel to people in the streets, they do anything to avoid it. They do anything. They pretend they don't see you. They start conversations that they weren't having. They walk quicker. Anything to avoid the Bible. Anything to avoid Jesus. Anything. But when I was reading Mark chapter 2 this week, I heard of a person who did the opposite. They did the opposite. They had such conviction, they had such belief in Christ that they would do anything to get to him. Would you guys do anything to get to Jesus? You're devout Catholics, so the answer to that is? Or what must you do to get to Jesus? You hear that? Hey, what's the chances? He says, to get to Jesus, you've got to do good works because he's a devout Catholic. Is that what you've heard? No. Well, let's look to Mark chapter 2. The Bible tells us that Jesus had returned to Capernaum. Jesus was at home. Wherever Jesus was staying, he was there. And word got around that Jesus was there. And what was Jesus doing at this place? He was speaking the word. He was expressing the word of God. He was telling them the gospel. He's gay. Well, she's gay. Well, wonderful. You know what you've got to do? You've got to come to Jesus. And they've all got excuses. And everybody in town came and they gathered round the house to hear what Jesus was saying. So the way the houses were built at this time, there was single level, single story. And the roof was a flat roof and on the side of the house there was a ladder so you could get up there, you could talk to your neighbour, you could sunbathe, you could just escape the wife and the kids, whatever, that's what was there, right? And the roof was packed down hard. It wasn't a concrete roof, but it might as well have been because it was made out of sticks and then I had some, some mud which was sun-baked and it was pressed down, packed down, rock solid this roof. Imagine you were sitting inside of this house and we sat there at the feet of Jesus and he's preaching the word, it's amazing, he's preaching the word. And next to us are some scribes, religious folk, and around us are some nearest and dearest, but this house is tight packed right and outside people are looking in the windows hundreds of people just trying to hear what the teacher Jesus Christ was saying they were hanging on his every word if there's anybody you want to listen to guys it's Jesus or somebody who's telling you about them at least and from a distance outside of this house we hear of a group of men now these men had a corner of a sheet each and in the middle of this sheet mate was another man now this man was paralyzed the bible says he was a paraplegic you know whatever that means he could not move the fact that his friends or these guys had to carry him in such a way that means the guy was like flat out he hasn't moved he can't move he can't get to where he wants to be he's stuck but he had some guys around him that had such faith that they would grab him and they would walk him to get god bless his sister just to get to Jesus anything just to get into the presence of the Lord so they carried him and they were met with this house that was mobbed by people just wanting to get close to Jesus some people were there because they didn't like him some people were there because they were nosy some people were there because they just wanted to see him you want to know what the fuss was all about but these guys wanted to get to Jesus because they believed that he could do something they believed in the rumours because rumours were getting around that the king of kings kind of had something about him. If anybody had excuses not to come to Jesus, it was these guys. Yeah, my mate, he can't walk, he's paralysed. Why would God allow that in the first place? He's too heavy, there's too many people, the house isn't big enough. You name it, these guys had excuses. Their excuse was before I'm gay, so I can't come to Jesus. Nonsense. Nonsense. You know that the Bible says... Come to me, Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. Right? So, these guys, they look at the crowd surrounding the house, and they thought, we have to get to Jesus. We've come too far. We've come too far, boys. I'm not going to give up now. My mate has got to get to Christ. Because if he gets to Christ, something can happen. We believe that something can happen. We try the wrong way. We can't fix things our own self. We need him. Do you need Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? You're a Muslim. We all need him. So what did they do? You know what they did? 
You know that roof I told you about? The roof that was packed down, heavy, but they said, we're going to go through the roof. Now we can just so passively read, hiya mate, you okay? We can so passively read the scriptures and say, oh, the guys just went on the roof. But this is a massive thing. And we come back into the house. We're here in the word of Jesus. We've done everything to get to his feet, right? I'm going to come down. We did everything to get to the feet of Jesus. And all of a sudden, the roof starts shaking. And people's eyebrows are raised. Up. What's going on here? Like, what's happening? And dust starts to fall down from the roof. It starts to go in Jesus' beard. It starts to go in Jesus' hair. And the Pharisees are tutting and the scribes are going, what's going on here? And people have said, I've done everything to get here. Who's spoiling this? What's going on? You know what was going on? These guys' faith was so strong. Their fervence to get to Christ was so much that they decided to pull apart with all they are, the roof. They destroyed the roof of Jesus' house. Or what the house that Jesus was staying in. I mean, that's not a small thing, is it? He destroyed the roof of somebody's house to get to Jesus. And then they lowered him down through the roof. I mean, it's funny even talking about it. They lowered this guy down, this paraplegic guy down to the feet of Jesus. What would your response be if that happened in church tomorrow? Actually, what would your priest's response be if this happened in church tomorrow? He'd kick off, wouldn't he? What was Jesus' response? If you don't know, I'm going to tell you. Jesus looked at them. And the Bible says, seeing their faith, not seeing their good works, not seeing their good behavior, like the Catholic guys, devout Catholic guys said before, not seeing their issues, like the people said there before, seeing their faith. Jesus said this, imagine it. Son, your sins are forgiven. Wow, praise God. Son, I can't call you son. I call you mate. But I can't call you son. Do I know why? Because believe it or not, I ain't your daddy. Right? I mean, I know we look the same, but I'm not. But Jesus looked at this guy. And he said, son, your sins are forgiven. And... You know who heard that? Everybody heard that in the house. But there's some scribes and some religious types were there. And they did not like that. They did not like it. Because when Jesus says, your sins are forgiven, what's he saying? Yes. Yes. The scribes understood what Jesus was saying. The scribes understood something that the Muslim can't understand. The scribes understood something that the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses couldn't understand, even yet today. Jesus is doing something that only God can do. He's forgiving your sins. I can't forgive your sins. Can't forgive my own sins. But Jesus can. So Jesus recognized what was sin in the heart. He says, why do you say those things in your heart? And they're probably like, oh my goodness, what, he, he sussed me out. Do you know what I mean? It was on my face. No, it was in your heart. Jesus asked them this. Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or to tell the man to get up and walk? The paralyzed man, which is easier. What was your first answer be? Go on. What would your answer be? What's easier to say to somebody your sins are forgiven or to get up and walk? Paralyzed man. Sins are forgiven. But in your audience, right, you could see your sins are forgiven. But your audience know what you mean, right? Jesus is saying, I'm making it very clear what I'm saying. It's probably easier to say to a paralyzed man, get up and walk. However, Jesus did it anyway, right? He did both. He says, right, get up and walk. And you know what the guy did? The paraplegic, the guy who could not move, the guy who had no hope, the guy who had been stuck, the guy who was dependent on his friends for everything, the guy who would do anything to get to Jesus, you know what he did? He took up his mat and he walked. And you know what everybody else did apart from the scribes? They praised God and said, I have never, ever, ever in all my days seen anything like this. Praise God, whoever this Jesus is, I need him. He's the one I need. Not the law. I can't keep it. Me religion and me tassels can't save. I need him. And him alone. 
get up and walk. In Newcastle, I say to you today, you may not be physically paralysed, physically stuck. Maybe you are. You need the same God we're talking about. You may not be physically paralysed, but you're spiritually paralysed. And what I mean by that is, all of us, apart from Christ, are stuck in our sins. We're stuck in our flesh. We're just a slave to it. And that place leads to death. And you try to get up and you try to get out of it yourself by balancing the scales, by doing some good stuff. But guys, you guys, you can't do it. You're still stuck on your mat of sin that leads to death. You know what we need? We need Jesus to deal with the main issue first and foremost. So what's the main issue? Our sin. And what does Jesus say to us? Son, daughter, your sins are forgiven. And how can our sins be forgiven? Because Jesus went to the cross. He paid a cost that we could not pay so that your sins could be forgiven. That your sins be, could be forgiven so that you could be set free. So that you could get up off the mat of the flesh and walk in the spirit set free. Because who the sun sets free is free indeed. Guys, honestly, I want to say this to you and you can take it or leave it. I hope that you do take it. Um, if you do anything, if you do anything today, get to Jesus. Whatever it takes, get to Jesus. No more excuses. No more excuses. The times are telling me exactly what's going on. I don't want to hear, I was brought up in the church and they did this to us. Jesus didn't do that to you. I don't want to hear the excuse of I'm gay or on this or on that. Jesus says come to him. I don't want to hear the fact that the church is a hypocrite. I'm not asking you to follow the church, I'm asking you to follow Jesus. I'm, I'm telling you, there's no more excuses. Jesus Christ displayed the love of God towards you at the cross. There's nothing you could have done. There's not a place you are. If a paralyzed man can get to Christ, so can you. And I want to say, surround yourself with people that are going to help you do that. Don't surround yourself with people who are going to lead you astray. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good character. You can't expect to get close to Christ when you're not going to run with people who are doing all the worst things. You can't expect to grow in the spirit. You know what's going on when they keep doing the things of the flesh with those people. See, the Bible tells us that those men, those friends, helped them get close to Jesus. And they were so fervent with it as well. Guys, I would do anything to get you guys close to Jesus. I literally would pull the roof tiles of a church if you would be saved. You'd have to visit us in jail though afterwards. Faith, God bless you, sister. God bless you, sir. Jesus says to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. That's a hard word. Wearing a cross is nice, especially if your grandma give it to you or something. It's nice. But the hard word is this, take up your cross and follow me. And do you know what that looks like? Going on the narrow road with those I'm talking about on the same mission, the opposite way of the world, and trusting that God's ways are better. And they are. And uh, he loves you, he made you, he wants to know you all the more. He wants you to know that, he wants you to know that, he wants you to know that, he wants me to know all the more. The Apostle Paul says his prayer for the church would be that they would know how deep and how wide his love is for you. So with that, I'm not going to preach you anymore. If you need anything, you've got that. You can reach out. We're going to be here. And um, the Bible says you must be born again in John 3. Okay? Um, so God bless you. God keep your face shining upon you. Take it easy. God bless you. So with all of that said, hi, sir. With all of that said, Newcastle, we would do anything to get you to Jesus. Anything. We would even, believe this or not, buy a microphone. Buy a step, make some signs, get some trucks, stand in the middle of the streets and preach at you so that you may know the king. Because he's so good. So good, Lenny. And there's none like him. And this king who came down, put on flesh, was born in a manger of a virgin, walked with the broken, washed the feet of sinners, went to the cross, Gave his life up. But three days later, what did he do? He rose again, conquering the grave. And then what happened? The Bible tells us that he's coming back. Oh, he's coming back soon. And like labor pains, the world's telling you that it's true. Like labor pains, it's getting worse and worse, darker and darker. And you're looking for answers in all the wrong places. But yet, here we are saying, Jesus is the answer. 
So, with all of that said, Newcastle, with great love, please come to Jesus today. Repent and believe. It's the only way.